Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to put an all metal, bi metal, hot end on the Cinder 5. Let's get to it. All right, get the camera in here a little bit. Try and level it out here for you. Keep all as much lighting out of the way. Now, I already did one of these on an Ender 3. Uh, that was before I had these new cameras, new microphones, some extra lighting. Uh, hopefully this turns out as a much better video. So, what we have here is a Beef and Bay upgrade. These are your generic bimetal hot ends. Got off Amazon, it was like eight bucks. No point even checking it out on the Amazon browser because uh, yeah, you can find them easy enough and there are a ton. Now, Scoop a chair in here. A couple of things we may, we do need, and we may possibly need. We need our Allen wrenches, even though it comes with some. We'll check out what's in the bag in a moment. Gonna need a C wrench, crescent wrench. Possibly. Something I learned on the last one. Possibly you will need a different uh, nozzle. And here is why. On my ender 3 which has the plastic probe which has a different throw than the metal one uh, i had issues with not being able to get it with this mount that i'd already put on there low enough to the bed to actually level the bed so it, the solution i came up with was i had to change it out and i will grab the one that comes with it so you can see the difference it is one of those very tall tall nozzles compared to the one which is currently on the printer this should be pretty close when i swap these out since it does uh design pretty well matches the original stock three or stock ender three hot end so having to swap out this nozzle is probably going to happen now the other thing that happened last time when i did that get it out back without dropping everything is depending on which one you get mine came with the heat sock Problem being, this nozzle too low for the heat stock or for the uh, hot end sock. So my solution for that was to cut it off. But then I also have, if it will fit, no, it will not fit. So we are going to have to cut it off. As I just, you could get you a different sock. Now, unfortunately, as I just noticed. Notice there are two different sizes, and the one that we need is this size, so this guy is not going to work. So we will probably just take a razor blade and cut the end off of this. Alright, let's check out what is in the bag. Go to the desk cam real quick, make this a little easier to see. Alright, get this out of the way since it was not in the bag. What we have in the bag is the replacement... Well, that camera's so far up there now. Hot end assembly. It comes with the heat block, nozzle, and the bimetal heat break, as you can clearly see, bimetal. Comes with a wrench. Comes with three different sized Allen keys, which is uh, quite a bit, and two screws. So let's get to it. Go back over to the side cam. All right. So that's a little easier view. First thing we're going to start with is remove this cover. And let's see if any of the ones that came in the bag are going to fit. Yay! Double purpose. 
this guy over a little bit. I am sure your result or uh, your printer is going to be different since this is a highly modified Ender 5. So, as I knock parts off, pointless belt cover. One day I'll put a tab super glue on there. All right, where is that other screw? It's right back in here. Of course, if you don't have a BL touch or you have a different sensor, oh God, it came off easy enough. Wasn't really holding anything on. There we go. Those are the only two screws. Looks like we're probably going to have to cut some zip ties to make this a little easier. If everything is very much tied together right here. I'll keep my elbow out of the camera. There we go. Slide the sleeving back. So let's get that out of the way. There we go. Then pull the sock off, see how dirty this guy is. Whew. It's had a bit of oozing on top and around the sides. No clue I had any leakage. Well, yeah, it's all around the hot end wires. Okay. So, now that we can see that it is surrounding the hot end wires, we have two options. Thought this was going to be quick. No. But it's real. Uh, we could replace this heater core, which requires cutting all these zip ties and running a new one all the way back down, opening the case, and getting back to the main board, which is going to be a lot of work. So I think what our easier option is, is we're going to kick this guy on. We're going to heat up this hot end, and we're going to try and clean away all this old filament. Luckily, I have the printer open here in the browser. Yep, I've already pissed off my probe. Let's go ahead and heat this guy up to about 220. see what happens can go pretty quick I don't think y'all can see that with the amount of light that's on in here there we go This is a correct heat sock. Let's confirm that. Yep. So I can take the one that I had on the printer and reuse it. So we don't have to cut this one. Almost a 220. Want to take some junk mini screwdrivers. Oh, I can smell it. And we're at 220. Let's come back up here. Let's see if I can clean any of this off. Oh, yeah. Even the top comes off pretty nice. Oh, it's just dripping all off. There we go. That's a lucky save. No fan on this guy. Keep my, my ugly head out of that camera. Well, the 
was probably a bad idea to wipe it on the heat bed. Last little bit off the back, not that it's going to matter. We'll probably never use this hot end again, but yeah, that's quite a bit. I think what we're going to do here, I'm going to take a piece of my paper towel and promptly burn myself. much off of this end as possible too since her just could be sealed to it be glued with the filament I know y'all can't see that there we go just trying to clear off as much as that as possible I think what we're going to do to avoid some further difficulty There we go. Is we are going to loosen the hot end screw now while this guy is hot. Go ahead and drop the bed a little so I can get my big fat arm in there. Hopefully, this will allow us to pretty easily and painlessly push that heater core out. And wrong one. This one. There we go. That screw was pretty loose. And it came all the way out. Woo! Ah, hot! Covered in filament. Ow! Don't do that. All right. Let's see if that heater core is going to move for us. Let's melt our probe. There we go. That's a good sign. It's nice and free. Now we can shut her down. Which is going to take forever to cool down. Alright. Down to zero. Alright. We'll give that a second. Go ahead and get rid of this nasty burnt filament. This is going to come off our flex plate. Well, wow. that was a bad idea. That does not want to come off. I think our best bet is to warm the heat bed, see if we can get it to delaminate just slightly. Go ahead and leave that booger on there for now. It does look like a bloody burger. Oh, booger. Alright. Still pretty warm. Although the hot end fan is turned off. So let's see what temperature we're getting reported. Oh, sorry, that is not the hot end fan. The part cooling fan. Let's put, slide this guy around. Just kind of hang him there so we can blow off and cool this guy down for us as quick as possible. Making sure we're not touching any of our plastic parts. We are not. Once this hot end fan kicks off, I'll go ahead and turn the printer off. It's pretty loud with the fans on the bottom.
Tick tock, tick tock. Go away and on that guy. Drop down in temp. We'll go ahead and lower this bed a little more. Make it a little easier to work. And you can see what I'm talking about. These fans are blowing right into the microphone. Temperature is about 88 degrees and dropping. I believe this guy should kick off around 80. No, maybe it's 60. It's a default temp. We're hitting 71 now. Come on. High 60s. Sixty-five. Sixty-three. Sixty-two, sixty-one, sixty degrees, fifty-nine, fifty-eight, fifty-seven. I'm tempted to put my finger on it. Oh, fifty-six, fifty-four. Oh, I'm gonna regret this. A little warm, but that ain't bad. That's workable. Yeah, we're just now hitting 52, 51. I think we're safe to work. All right. Hey, look at that. So default temp is 50 degrees in Clipper. All right, let's get that off of there. Go ahead and shut it down. Oh, uh, we probably should have... Oh, Lord, look at that. Heater core did get stuck again. Probably going to have to heat it right back up. Yep. Joy. Joy, 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 joy. Go ahead and turn this guy a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't fall off the desk. Put the camera up so you can see a little better. And I can see a little better. Another thing we want to do is try and reuse this thermistor that's in there. Oh, falling off the desk. It's like Phillips screw. So let's go ahead and start the heat up process again. First fail. Yeah, that guy is solid. Oh, well, first attempt in learning. It's nice. I haven't hope, had to open any of my tools currently. This guy is going to fit. All right, looks like... All the Allen screw sizes they used on this replacement are the same size as the stock. Which the hot end looks cocked to one side. Just the heat block. That would explain the leakage. We're at 160. Oh, there we go. That's enough. Oof, boy. Let's try and 
pull this guy straight out. Woo! Burning filament. While we're here, let's go ahead and get this canister loose. Wow, that screw was loose as well. We're going to pull it all the way out just to make this easy. It's covered in PLA. Now we're this far. Let's go ahead and set the temperature back down to zero. So we don't get thermal runaway of any kind. There we go. It is out. There we go. It and the thermistor. Let's make sure it doesn't the thermistor doesn't melt on the side of it. I'm going to take my screwdriver and just bend it out to the side. Very carefully not to break that guy. All right. We're at a lie. The mister says it is 50 degrees. Hit the fan still going. There went the fan. But guaranteed that hot end is still burning hot. Yes, it is. Let's rotate back around. Right. First step while that's cooling down is we are going to go ahead and loosen this coupler. No. This is the only thing you need this for. Get the little tension clip out. Little tip. Put the little notch on. Going up. You can get much more, much easier. Get your thumbnail in there. That was going down, and my fat fingers would not fit. All right. I'll spin this guy around by hand. Oh boy, that heat break is warm. It is warm. I can feel the heat all the way at the top. And of course, what's going to happen? Is we're going to have to adjust this tubing because this is a standard hot end, I believe. I believe this is all metal. Oh, it's just coming out. That's really not a good sign. Oh, look at that end. Look how much filament has seeped around the outside. Whoa, get off of there. And the last filament clogging it up. So we are definitely cutting the end off of this Bowden. All right, now that that's free, we can kind of let this hang down. Making sure nothing is touching that heater core. Woo! Hot potato. Hot potato. All right, shut the printer back down. Let's take our largest Allen, and that is warm too. Where'd you go? Right into the extrusion. First screw. Oh, that is warm, warm, warm. A potato. Second screw out so we don't drop it. I'm going to use this Allen just to pick it up. Woo! That thing is a mess. And quite honestly... That would be a pain to get apart. But you can clearly see somebody, me, did not assemble that correctly. So there's why we're having all that leakage up around the Bowden tube and on the outside. Set that aside. All right. <clears throat> Here is our replacement. The only thing we really make sure of is that this little grub screw is facing forward. We're also, hey, look at that. If you don't have an E3D style hot end, this comes right out. 
see all the way through that guy. We are going to reuse the coupler. And now we have a spare part. Comparing these screws. All right, I have... Oh, no. <clears throat> Those screws are for the bottom. Yes, they are. So, yes, you do have to reuse the screws that held the other one on. Let's make sure we don't put it backwards. There we go. Get this guy slightly on there. Not going to cinch them all the way down yet because sometimes you kind of have to wiggle this guy left and right to get whoop, left and right to get it perfect. I'm just going to leave them loose right there. All right, so now we get to go to the heat block. Go ahead and remove this guy and drop him. All right, first off, we're going to do a little optional step and we're going to use some. Um, heat sink compound right here to give it a little better contact with the rest of this heat break mount so that way it can actually distribute the heat as efficiently as possible around there. It does not take a lot. And that is what our paper towel is for which is now covered in burnt plastic. Let's get this guy on here. Also, before I go a step further, can you see the flat spot? That is where your grub screw is going to go in and hold it in place. So, no point in covering that. Is this stuff still in there? There we go. All right, do our best to keep it out of the inside. Grab another little bit of paper towel. And I mean a little bit. It's tough with one, one hand. <clears throat> and guaranteed, no matter what you do, you will get this heat sink compound all over your fingers, your tools, your clothes, your desk, your computer, your mouse buttons, your face. There we go. I am just roughly covering it. Does not need to be thick. Also, the clearances are pretty tight, so you're going to scrape a bunch off anyways trying to insert this. There we go. That's nicely covered. Whoop, one little spot right there. Not that it matters, but it does to my OCD. There we go. Throw that away. Let's mount this guy in here. It's a tight fit. Let's go ahead and grab our smallest Allen key. This looks like it has plastic on it now from the hot end. Yes, it does. Back it out. Take it all the way up. Do not, do not try to get these guys super tight. Um, cheap products, not that there's anything wrong with it. They have their place and their purpose. Very soft grub screws. You'll strip out the top. Very, this is aluminum uh, heat blocks. So you strip out the threads there. Everything just needs to kind of be right over hand tight. Uh, I personally, generally, like to use the Allen wrenches this way. Not this way, because this way it's much harder to get more torque on them, which gives me a little bit of a safety factor. So that is now in. That feels good and solid. We are almost there. All right. We're, now it is time to mount the heat block on there. We're going to go ahead and take our nozzle out and drop it like everything we've done today. And a Phillips screw on the side. Let's go ahead and loosen that guy. 
far as we can get with them falling out. That looks pretty good. All right, we need to determine the top and the bottom. The bottom, as you can see, has the grub screw for holding the heater core in and two beveled points where those screws are going to go. So that needs to go this way. And let's see if... Oh, here's our next problem. All right. I ah, still got plastic on the end of this guy. There we go. Ah, yes. Now I remember going through this with the other one. Most of our heatsink compound is still there. Let's actually do that right there. Take this guy and make sure we still have correct side down. I would actually advise doing this in reverse order. Get the heat block on, then cover everything in nasty, disgusting stuff that's going to get on everything. Okay. Use this screwdriver on this flat spot. Try to line them up. This block is going to go like that. The other thing we need to determine, which is going to happen every time you change nozzles, highly recommend buying a large batch set once you find a manufacturer you like, if you just use the no-name ones. As you can definitely see, the threading length on this guy is much shorter than this guy. So that means the distance this heat block is screwed on is going to make a difference. And every time you change nozzles, if they are slightly different, you might have to redo this whole step. So we are going to screw it in. Now look at that. We have a gap. Get a little closer in there. Can. We do have a gap here between the nozzle and the heat block, but that is way too much of a gap. So what we're going to do is bring this down. Use my screwdriver to hold it in place so it doesn't spin maybe loosen our nozzle drop it down some more so we can actually make the whole turn oh i'm going the wrong way be going this way now that has gotten all nasty on me Rough this in there. Let's try that. Nope, way too much of a gap. So this heat block needs to come down one more turn. Tighten this nozzle up. Ah, that is what we're looking for. So now, <clears throat> boy, my throat is dry today. We just have a little bit of a gap, enough to get this micro screwdriver in between the nozzle and the actual heat block. We can make sure this guy is lined up. All the way in. He is tight. <clears throat> that out of the way. Now line this guy up. Go. Now, I did not put any heat sink compound between the threads of the heat break, the bimetal heat break, and the actual uh, heater block. Uh, the reason being is we do not want to transfer heat from here into the heat break. I did do that in the last video and then thought about it afterwards. This one should perform better, but I have had no problems with the other one. Um, it's only printed PLA, PLA plus, SPLA, and PETG, so. Who knows if uh, ABS or some other filament on there would cause an issue, but I don't think so. So we still have our perfect amount of gap. We're going to take our last two screws and stick them in the bottom. These guys are Allen head as well. Let's go ahead and find the right Allen head before we do that. There we go. Now, I would also recommend on these guys, 
uh, a little bit a dab of Loctite just to keep them from falling out. I have had them come out on a few occasions because they're on the bottom. They work themselves loose. They're directly getting heated quite a bit. But that is snug right there. Our nozzle is still good. Everything looks good. All right. So now we get to go with this assembly mess. First off, let's get this coupler off. If we can. Actually, first, let's go ahead and cut this hose down, this Bowden tube down. Not losing too much, but that is definitely some ick. We're just going to get this roughly 90 degrees. I know I'm not doing this the proper way. Not entirely straight. Do that again. Bad idea, bad ideas. We're full of bad ideas today. That's even worse. You want to see me cut through my finger on camera? Oh! Oh no. I'm okay. There we go. Boy, that's even worse. Let's get this coupler off first. There we go. Use the frame. Press that coupler. See if we can get this boat and dupe to slide out. Ah, guys, in there. My neighbor is tuning up his bass guitar. So we may get a bit of a concert. I'm sure this microphone's picking it up. Oh, that guy's stuck, stuck, stuck. All right, so next step. Hate to lose this much tubing, but it is what it is. At least this gives us a guide to cut this perfect. I am just going to pull back on the frame. Just the coupler. There we go. Ah, uh, yeah, straight as cut yet. Lost a little bit of Bowden tube, but that's okay. We should have spare. Now let's see if we can get this coupler out. Oh man. It is just wedged in that tubing. Backup plan. All right, there's something you guys may run into. Oh, I'm looking through my parts. I'm looking through my parts. I have a whole thing of parts. Go. I have some more. That is something you're definitely going to need when you get into 3D printing. It's lots of parts that you never thought you would need. There are two types of these Bowden couplers. This is going to take the wider one. And this smaller one is for the extruder. Once again, something I, I suggest buying in, in bulk, a little 5 or 10 pack. There we go. That guy's on. We're going to leave it just hand tight for now because at the end, there's a very important tip that I picked up from 3D Print SOS. We have already thanked for this. Because it saved me a ton of, well, it ended a bunch of frustration. I won't say it saved me, but it hopefully will save you a bunch of frustration. So that is roughly together. 
about 80% there before we start throwing the wiring back into it. Something to look for is you want to make sure when you're tightening these screws that it doesn't kick this heat block kind of off. It's looking good. All right. Going to hang these guys over the back. Actually, we're going to go ahead and cut this zip tie as well. There we go. Give us a little more room to work. Get us two ready to replace that at the end. Right. Boop. Let's heat our core in here. And it feels like we're hitting the grub screw. That one. This is the medium. Small, medium, large. Not large. My grub screw in place. There we go. Did you see that? Did you see it twist? Yes, you did. But you have to be very careful with these cheaper hot ends. You see, it's already loosened up and up just from that. Screw my nozzle back down. So basically what that tells you is these two screws are really just providing some alignment support. It is all about the pressure and having that gap between the nozzle and the hot end to really keep this all in place and in alignment. So that is in. Let's turn this way. Let's see if I can get you a shot in here and see if we can get this thermistor in here. There we go. Not too bad. Wish you had a little more lighting. Slide this guy over. I'm going to remove the screw which holds the thermistor in. Hopefully, it drops in our hand, not on the floor. It is out. Here is the second spot. I recommend some. Heat seeking compound. We're going to just put a little dab in the hole for the thermistor. This will help conduct the heat directly to the thermistor. Get it down in there. Also helps kind of stick in there. So now it's not just not going to pop out. Let's put our screw back in. Whoop. There's no way to do this without blocking the camera. Roughing it. Now we have heat sink compound all over our fingers. Alright, I'm just going to have to block the camera here for a second. There we go. That is just snug. So there we go. We have the thermistor in. We have the heater core in. We have this grub screw tightened. Let's double check. That was the medium size. Yep. Tighten our nozzle again. Keep this guy from moving around. Okay, turn it back to 90. Adjust the camera again. Right. Let's go ahead and tighten these guys just a bit. looking good also means with these cheaper hot ends you definitely going to need to put a wrench on the heat block when you're changing the nozzle to keep this from spinning and getting out of alignment all right so now we have our wiring in it's time to get our bowden tube back in we are just going to slide it all the way down in there that does not feel like it's all the way down in there well, loosen the coupler. Yep, that's definitely not in there. We're hitting on the top. It's a little further. So 
Don't go too far. Tighten this guy back up. And tight. Push it all the way down in there, which is definitely going to go much further than the last time. All right, that is definitely bottom on the bottom out down here because this actual Bowden tube now comes all the way down here. So let's do this. We're going to back this up. About a full turn. And we're going to push this Bowden tube back in there. Now we're going to tighten this coupler back up. This is the tip from uh, 3D Print SOS that will definitely stop leakage that is prone to happen on some of these all metal hot ends. Go, that's in there. Take a retention clip, see if it will fit on this guy. Right, he's in there nice and tight. Now that is nice and tight. All right. Get that out of the way. Let's check, see if our sock is going to fit. Yes, the one that came off the stock does fit. All right, take it back off. Now comes the real fun, the not this that came with this hot end does not fit this nozzle but we have another one Let's see if this is the one yep I just heard something hit the floor I don't know what it was all right everything looks pretty good how's it look to y'all of course, the camera's a little crooked. There we go. Let's fire the printer up, reconnect clipper, and we will heat up the hot end so we can then tighten down the nozzle. Take it up to 220 degrees Celsius. We can watch it heat up together. Hey! I didn't know we had the little dancer. It's our private dancer. Hundred and sixty-five, sixty-seven, heating up nice and fast. Probe is still flipping out. Flipping out, man. Just hit two hundred. Two eighteen, two nineteen, two twenty-one, two twenty-two, two twenty-three. Sure, 224, 223, 224. Definitely going to have to do some PID tuning. We'll let it ride for now. Let's come back up here. I'm going to spread my wrench open all the way. This is also nearly impossible with the cover on. first hands and everything gets very hot very quickly oh 
holding this heat block as straight as I can. That looks pretty good. All right. And take the temperature back down. Yeah, 222. Wow. Yeah, that PID shows it all over the place, or the temperature graph. We will let that come down. While that's happening, let's go ahead and put this cover back on. And try and melt our, our parts. No, we are going to wait. But we are going to just hold the fan here, cool this guy down. We'll know when it gets to 50. Dropping rapidly, 185. 180. It's not worth melting some parts just to get this on that much quicker. One sixty. One fifty. One forty. And counting. One thirty. One fifteen. One oh five. One hundred. Ninety. We should be relatively safe. Eighty. Ooh, that's still pretty warm. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the printer off. I think we're close enough. All right. Now we can carefully bend these wires back. Slide our cooler round that's something else you're going to want to make sure that all your parts are going to fit if you have anything custom on here like i do make sure we don't pinch our fan wires which we are Drop those on the outside there we go there's our cover, mostly in place. That guy over. Straighten out the camera slightly. There we go. That should leave two screws to put back in, one which is still in the mount. Use with a slightly longer screw. It is in. Let's put the top one in. And luckily enough, it's going in straight. Usually what happens is that screw likes to 
catch on the edge of fan cover, fan shroud, and just start kicking it around crazy. Turn this one up. There we go. And they're nice and solid. There we go. There's our full assembly. Let's get our heat sock on there. It goes the right direction. If we can. Oh, no. Yes. We're doing it twice. Can you guess what happened? This right here is why we don't do any edits, any cuts. I should, this is one long piece. So y'all can see my fail. So there was some fail. Anything worth doing is worth doing three times. Get this guy out of the way. Can't get in because I have a custom cooler on the end here. Can't get it in there. there go. Nozzle's definitely poking out. Now let's try that again. Try it once again, not to catch our fan wires. It's now in location. Start with the top one this time. Can I catch this on the desk cam? Nope, you can't see it at all. I just do not have enough room. This guy started. There we go. We feel it coming through. It's time it's going to fight us. And we're going to drop all of our tools. Can't tell for the life of me if it is going into alignment. It doesn't feel like it. There, there we go. That's in. Not all the way, but enough to hold her down in place. Let's get this guy in. Go. That guy's tight. Going in. No, he's not. Back the screw out. This is exactly what tends to happen. Make sure we're in alignment. Pressure down on there. That's that's in there now. There we go. That's usually how it goes. I know it was too easy the first time. Our is now much more solid. Okay. All right. So now we have everything back assembled. Looking around for any spare parts I might have missed. No. Heat compound up. This is the part where we take our old hot end. Stick it in the bag, because we might need it later. This piece, stick it in the bag. 
we will save the nozzle that came with it for later and the heat sock let's kick the printer on while that's kicking on getting ready get rid of these extra parts on my desk We should be completely done with all of our tools, except for some zip ties, clean up the wiring. All right. Let's see, do I have a scene set up for... Nope, I don't. here let's see why it will not let me capture my browser probably because I am using Firefox and OBS really wants Chrome. Okay. Let's see what happens this time. No browser. There we go. That was highly complicated. Let's actually see if we can make this camera a little smaller. Right about in there. There we go. Okay. And I can't click on that because that is not a real browser. At least not inside OBS. Grab my keyboard. Come over here. I believe it's PID underscore calibrate. Yes, it is. Let's open up. Le Google. And the whole command we want is okay. Yep, yep, yep. A lot of background information. There we go. Bid calibrate heater equals extruder, and then the target. I can't remember all of that. And we are going to go for 220 degrees. Press enter and we will see what happens. Fan kicked on, good sign. While that is heating up, we will grab some filament. We will 
go with some Eerie One Galaxy Purple. Up, clean off some, some mess. Instead of waiting on this to get to temperature to use my macro for film out loading, we're just gonna stick it in there. There we go, just like we bottomed out. Give a little more accurate. Yep, feeding it's coming through. A little more accurate representation of what's really gonna happen while this thing's printing. Oh, look at that. The music kicked on. Let's get rid of you. The only scene that wasn't turned off. Or was it the only scene it was turned on? I don't really pay attention. All right, it's going through its first cycles. I cannot remember if it is five or eight times. Well, this is also happening. Let's come over and heat up the heat bed to about 70. So, some real world conditions. Seventy. There we go. No, it did take it. Getting a nice flow of filament coming out the end there. Do not see heat bed heating up. Ah, because we were still in a pit tune, it will not let us heat up the bed. It's going to wait till that is done. Okay, is what it is. Light out there a little bit. And there are our results. Now, my setup is a little different than yours. Most of you can just do this save config command, but unfortunately, I cannot because the way my configuration file is split up. So I will just copy the raw data. We'll come over here, we'll go into our folder, click on extruder.config. I like to paste it a couple lines down at the end so I can't screw things up. There's our P. How much difference? We went from 20.251 to 31.662. That's a big difference. Our I went up from 1.031 to 2.145. And our D went up to 116.358 from 99.483. I'll have to compare this later on to my other printer to see what it was set at. So it was an Ender 3, but they should be pretty close. Now we can delete this line. We should be good. Save and restart. There we 
go. Let's go and get our heat bed up to 70. Move it back up. I'm just going to do this by hand. Actually, let's go ahead and home all while we're waiting on that. Here comes the heat bed. First floor lingerie home accessories going up. Let's see if we broke anything. Finger on power button just in case. Whoop! And hot end sensor didn't trigger, or a uh, homing switch didn't tr didn't trigger. Not good. Not good. Right. All right. Lights on that time. Reconnect clipper. Maybe. Maybe. And refresh the browser. Shouldn't make a difference though. Let's power cycle again. Fingers and toes crossed. Okay, what is going on? Oh, we're on the wrong printer. Because we refresh the browser. Ah, I know what's going on. We're going to disconnect the USB cable. Plug it back in. And now we get nothing. So much fail, guys. So much fail. Right. Let's just restart Clipper all the way. Come over here. We will reboot our host. Give it a second. Uh, this is running off a all-in-one mini PC, a little quad core, which is running four printers. Luckily, nothing else was printing at the time. We'll see what happens. It's running Ubuntu uh, natively with built-in SSD with Clipper installed right on top. See what happens. It's, I know for sure it's still booting. Do, 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 do. Yeah. 
Yay! There we go. Let's go back, get our heat bed at 70. While that is going, we are going to run the PID Calibrate one more time now that we have the new settings in the config file. So we'll see what happens. It should be much more stable. Heating decently fast, and no, let's not try to home it while it is doing a pit tune. Even though this printer has been upgraded with the E3D uh, Mini version 3 for the Ender printers been very happy with them. I've got that so far on one, two, two printers? Yes. Yes, so far on two. We need to get a third one. Ooh, heat bed is warm. Take our small screwdriver so we can get this plastic off. Oh, there we go. Turn back into a fresh burger. Pieces there here and there. There we go. PEI flex plate saved. While that's heating up, I'm going to get some of the kinks out of this wire. Pulling these back a bit. There we go. I'm happy with that. I really don't think we need to put another uh, zip tie around here. It should be fine. All this is well together. Uh, eventually... I do believe this is going to go to a clack ender style or clicky probe, uh, so all this will go away. This would probably be the one scene I do need that background music because this is not very entertaining. We should be almost through this pit tune. Interestingly enough, oh, there we go. Now we're seeing state. It's not seeing the extruder state update. It was just stuck on zero. There we go. 33.68, 2.36, and 120. Let's go ahead and copy this. Come over here to machine. Run to our folder. Click on extruder. Down at the bottom, paste it in, let's compare it. All right, originally, well, after our first tune was 31.662, this is now 33.668. I went from 2.154 to 2.364, and D went from 116.358 to 120.05. Let's go ahead and copy these in.
Ideally, we should do this three times. But we were just going to go for two. That should be close enough. The other thing we will need to check is our... Do, 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 do. Is it in here or I have it split up? I have it split up, so let's save and close there. We'll go with the ones that we have for now. Let's go down to probe. Here's all our Z probe settings. We will probably have to change. Our Z offset, which is right here. That's at 1.158. But for now, let's try this. Because that looks pretty close to the original. Let's see what happens. We'll just X out of there. Go back over to our dashboard. Let's choose something we have in here to try and print. Something that is PETG. Your files. I know I should have a calibration cube or something in here. There we go. There is a cube. Will we print it? Let's confirm because I did not. I was not smart enough to add the temperature to the file name. Let's check what it is over here. 230. Let's drop that down. 220. 220. Take the heat bed down to 65. And save and close. Now it made it the very first. Now. There we go. Let's print it. Actually, before we do that, Let's do a home all. See what happens. Probe extended. Nope. Fail again. Okay. So, yes, let's go ahead and kick her back on, drop it down, oh yeah, this one is much shorter, I'm not sure how I even made that previously, all right, Or it's probably not going to restart. That's okay. We don't need it now. Here are those little setbacks. So what we need to do is we're going to need to drop this probe further down so it will actually engage before we're bottoming out. Really surprised I'm having an issue with that. It does seem to be kicked back slightly. Let's... Is definitely in there tight. So, luckily, I have been through this before. And wrong Allen key. Wrong Allen key. This guy? Yes. So, keep my hand out of the way. I'm going to just go ahead and loosen the screws. You've got two options when you come into this situation. Well, I guess there's more than two. But two easy ones that don't require you to buy anything else. You can find you another Pro mount design, which this is another reason we're going to go to a clicky or clack ender style. Because when I previously went to this, this is actually, I've used this exact same probe mount on my other printers. But, 
Those are a different version of the probe, which has the plastic plungers, and they are much longer. Try not to lose our screw, our nut there. There's the second one. Right, drop it down. Gosh, part of the problem, wires are stuck in there. Okay, as you can see, maybe, let's see if I get really close in here. I have very long screws on here, much longer than was necessary. But what I have done is taken those long screws, put an, a nut here on the bottom, and then another nut on the bottom there. So what we will do is make sure we have enough screw length. Take this down a bit, about in there. Back that nut all the way up. go. Push our probe out of the way. Get a second one on there. Make two hands. Unfortunately, this is as far forward as this camera will go on the mount that it's on. There we go. Now we have double nuts here on the bottom on this extremely long screw. Let's confirm it's going to poke through. Yes, it does make it all the way through. All right. Let's take the second one down a bit. So we take the first one all the way down. Make sure these screws will spin around. Yes, they are. They've been wallowed out enough. The holes have. that It's not going to bind up. Now we can tighten these two nuts all the way back up. Definitely make sure they are matching. Get one more nut. Meeny, miny. Oh, I'll just bring all three. Not in the first box. Second box. The third box. Not the fourth box. No, because they're in the separate box of nuts that I bought. Not those. Not those. Not those. Those, 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 not those. Springs. Not. Sure, I have not lost any. No, oh, no, we are going to need two nuts. Drop this guy down. Back over to the big camera for now. Yeah, it's a little easier. Just warm enough to make those uncomfortable. Pull this guy to the side. Hold our nut to the bottom. Screw to get started. There it goes. Spin these up to the top. Oh, problems. So this is exactly how it is with 3D printing. It is very rare that you do any type of simple or even complex upgrade that just goes perfectly. There's always some kind of problem. So we'll get that 
back on there. Yep, those are aligned perfectly, even though this mount's a little crooked. It's okay. Get our probe in there. Get our nut on the bottom. This is the hard part. Get it perfectly aligned with the screw without getting cross-threaded. Ah, that's a nay. Sorry, there's no way to do this without my big hand being in the way. There we go. All right, that is on enough to get it started. Let's try the back one. Oh, that feels much better. Tighten that guy down. I'm just holding the screw, trying to keep it from spinning with my hand. There we go. All right. That mount definitely likes to kick back slightly. I Fail in the design, even though it is it is completely screwed down on the two screws. All right, that should give us enough clearance. Go back over here. Let's see what happens. Disconnect the USB. Power cycle to printer. I believe what is happening is because uh, we're getting power from the USB hub that the, these are on. Ooh, light flashed. And the actual printer su uh, power supply. Refresh the browser just to confuse herself. Make sure we select the correct printer. And no. So let's go ahead and do another reboot. And play the waiting game. While that is rebooting, I want to put these other screws up. Right? That's the kind of the stuff you need. And you always need more than you think you need. So when you get on Amazon, buy the big box. Because you will use it eventually. Unless you switch printer brands. Because you will notice some manufacturers like to stick with M2s, M5s, and then others will go with M3s, M7s. M4s. Get rid of our excessive tools. Throw our garbage away. All right, let's try and reconnect. Yes. There we go. Nope, not yet. Go on, put manually bring up the heat bed just to save a little time. It's home all, see what happens. Keep my finger on the power switch. Of course, now we're going to have to readjust our Z offset. That looks way better. Let's 
success. All right. So now from this point, we should be able to do the uh, Z calibrate, but unfortunately I have had nothing but problems with the way I have my config split up to do the Z calibrate. So we will do this the old school way. We will get a sheet of paper. We will set the printer at 0.01. So let's go down to one first. Let's make it two. Just to be safe. Okay. That's good. Let's go down to one. That definitely looks more more than one millimeter. Take it down to zero. No, nope. not there yet. Let's see if we'll let us go directly into negative zone. Do negative point five. Yep. Let's see where that gets us. Nope. Still plenty of space. Negative point seven. Nothing. Point eight. Nothing. Point nine. Nothing. Let's do negative one. Negative one point five. Oh, now we're hitting. All right. Negative four. A little better, but still catching. Negative 1.3. Just barely grabbing. Let's go ahead and hit, heat the extruder up to 220. Make sure we don't have any blobs on the end. Pull the paper out while that's happening. Definitely looks like we have a blob on the end. And you guys thought this was going to be a simple, short, 15-minute video. No, no, wait, sorry, that was me. That was me, my bad. But these are the real-world problems you are going to run into. Murphy was an optimist. Positive something would go wrong. Just didn't know what or when. We're heading to right about 140. One seventy five, one ninety three, two hundred. Yep. We just cleared that blob out. Now it is definitely flowing free. Now let's go back and take this back. 1.4. Oh, there it is. That feels perfect. So we need to add 1.4 to or subtract 1.4 from our Z height offset. Put our temperature back down to zero, go back over to the machine, go into our config, go to probe config. Right now, we're at 
Oop. Or forget. Let's come back over here. Dashboard. Negative 1.4. Copy that out. Go back to machine. Look at our probe. You see offset. As you can tell, I have several here where I have adjusted them. We'll call this one. Comment it out. Oh, yes. Ah, that's right. The other one we had on there was all metal, but it was not all metal by metal. Or that actually, no, that is incorrect. That is from the other printer. I went through several. Okay. We will just call that original. Keep it simple. Let's see, underscore offset. Colon. Let's try adding this first to see what happens. So that will make that two. Five, five, eight. Okay, delete that. That should get us in the ballpark. Let's save and restart. Let's try to home all. Homing is successful. The nozzle looks clean. Let's take it down to one millimeter. Do our paper test. Looking good. We'll do it by point ones. Or point nine, point eight, point seven, point six. Still no friction. Point five, point four. Three point two. Oh, point one. Right on the money. Okay, let's try and print our calibration cube. We're not going to watch the whole thing, but we're going to at least make sure that it starts and our first layer looks halfway decent. And now you throw away that piece of paper. Uh, I swore we changed that 70 to 65. Let's see what happens. Sixty one out of seventy. Was really hoping to avoid that probe issue, but uh, is what it is. Oh, what just happened? Oh, <laughs> hot end still cooling off from previous. That scarred me. 
68.5, almost a 70. There we go. As I said in a previous video, the uh, one mod I really recommend to an, doing to an Ender 5 is this crossbar relocation. So otherwise, it would be right there, which is right where you need to look to check nozzle, first layer, all that stuff. It is such a pain. This is probably the best upgrade I've ever done to this printer, besides all the other upgrades. But it just makes it's so much more enjoyable to print because you can actually see what's going on without sticking your head over and then under and over and then off to the side and back over here and then just can't see. All right, Struder is almost a temp. We're at 190 of Okay, right, it's doing its Z home. Good sign. It's going to start its purge line. Don't see anything yet? There it goes. Is looking good except for the front got a little pulled up. A little bit of blob there on the end. Our skirt is looking good. All right, I think we have success. There we go, starting on the main cube. Pull that off because I, I can't. I actually find it much easier to pull it off at the beginning of the print while it's still nice and warm than at the end and trying to pick, pick, pick and getting it under your fingernail. Gonna get the camera up a little higher. It can. Doesn't really help though. This is a decently slow calibration cube. I believe it uh, uh, either 70 or 100 millimeters per second. First layer seems to be going down. Nice and well. Should have counted those side walls. Oh, yeah. They look like three walls.
First two layers are down. Looks like printer's speeding up. Back over to a big view. There we go. Starting on infill. There are a lot of walls in this cube. I'm not sure why I sliced it that way. Probably wasn't paying attention. What we are checking for right here I uh, should explain this, is originally when I put this hot end on my second Ender 3 Pro, I had issues. Um, this is probably not the same manufacturer, but it was the exact same type and design of hot end I have on my other Ender 3 Pro, and that gave me absolutely zero issues. The issues I had on the second Ender 3 Pro was dealing with retractions. Um, you get about halfway up to the model, and then it would just start getting clogged. And I could not for the life of me figure out what was going on. I reseeded the Bowden tube. I recut the Bowden tube. I uh, changed nozzles three or four times. Changed my slicer settings on the amount of retraction over and over and over. Did a bunch of retraction tests. And could just not get it. I, I was about to end, give up and go back to the original uh, hot end. Uh, then by chance, I came across 3D Print SOS's short that talked about spinning back this coupler, then pushing the Bowden tube in a little further, and then tighten it back down. And that instantaneously fixed it. The very next print, I knew it was resolved. Uh, so if you are getting that issue, that's how you fix it. So it's looking pretty good and printing decently fast. Let's go ahead and let this go. We're going to bring the music on. And we're just going to let this go. Bring that up, and we're going to go ahead and bring our mic down, and we'll be back when this is done.
All right. Looks like it is almost done. Should be on the last few top layers now. Looks like a successful print. Won't know until we get it off. It is looking good to me. So close. So close. I guess I could look at Clipper. Yeah, we are at... Oh, wow, only 90%. Yep, that is Ninety-seven. Ninety-eight. So close. And Tissa. Ninety-nine percent. Patient. And a hundred percent. Yay. All right. Get it off. Hey. All right. There we go. There's our first print. This is a galaxy purple. PETG. That's little glitters in it. It does look better in person. Defects that I'm seeing, obviously I have a little bit of issue with the corners on this printer. It's had some mild acceleration tuning, but obviously needs some more. We got little lips right on the corners. One little bit of strain here on the top. Let's check out the top. Looks pretty good. I would call that a success. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I would. All right. <clears throat> so that is the installation of an all-metal, bimetal, generic caught in off of amazon on an ender 5 hope this helps you out uh not oh well they did it for me uh, we're going to run some more prints on this do some more tuning and uh, this will probably become our new test bed printer for all of our filament tests so i will catch you guys next time have a good one